Uh, so good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Nick Nagar. I'm the president of the European Generics Association and European Biosimilars Group. It's, uh, it's wonderful to be here. We are uh, conducting our own clinical trial this morning in terms of the temperature of the room, uh, just, to, uh, just to help you uh, uh, maintain your engagement. I was uh, reading recently that actually the temperature of a room directly determines the, uh, the level of engagement of the audience. Uh, this has been proven uh, in many conferences. It's also been proven in uh, comedy shows as well. Um, so it is actually fairly well researched. So we hope this will be an optimum temperature. We do have a temperature control here. So if I detect that you're not fully with us, I will be reducing the temperature slightly. <laughs> and if I <laughs> detect that you're getting overexcited, um, maybe I'll just bring the temperature up a little bit. Um, but look, it's, it's wonderful to be here. We have uh, some 279 participants uh, today, uh, which shows that, that the growing strength, and of course it's the 13th uh, event and conference of its kind, uh, and it really shows the tremendous progress that this industry is making. Uh, if we consider that there are a representation here from uh, 21 uh, EU member states and some 15 uh, countries outside the EU, it shows its global relevance. Uh, when I look back over the last uh, 10 years, the progress has been phenomenal. And I think you'll see that the contribution this industry is making to patients and patients' access to high-quality medicine uh, is really, really wonderful and a huge motivator for me personally. If I consider the, um, the, the, the vision uh, that we've set for uh, the EGA and the EBG, it's about sustainable access to high-quality medicine for all European patients. And you'll see that if you look at our... Uh, overall pillars which underpin this vision, a deep commitment, patients first and at the center of everything that we do. So we're focused on patients, uh, we're focused clearly on quality. This is a, a stringent standard industry and we are deeply committed to the higher standards in Europe. Uh, the value, the value and the precious value that we bring uh, to, to patients and to society is, is very well documented, but it's so easy to forget. It's so easy to focus on the cost of medicines and forget the precious value that health has to each of us and each of our families. We're deeply committed to sustainability, and I'll talk more about that, but it's not only sustainable as availability of medicine, it's the sustainability of what's a, a very important industry in Europe. Uh, we are the leading industry in Europe. Biosimilars uh, were born here in Europe and have developed tremendously well over the last 10 years. And of course, we're deeply committed to partnership, and that underpins today's event. It's about how we work together. It's about how we shape this industry and this market uh, together. So firstly, in terms of commitment to patients, and you'll hear this consistently through the uh, panel presentations and discussions over the next couple of days, we're making a huge contribution to the increase of medicine usage. So if you consider that uh, in the last uh, year since the first biosimilars was launched, we have over 400 million patient days of treatment. Tremendous experience with biosimilars. You see a, a really exciting pipeline. Biosimilars in the pipeline being brought forwards for rheumatoid arthritis, for Crohn's disease, uh, right through uh, cancer indications uh, a, a beta cell non-Hodgkin's uh, lymphoma, when you consider that actually uh, not all patients across Europe receive optimum treatment, there's tremendous opportunity to improve patient welfare and patient outcome. And what's also exciting, as you see the first uh, infliximab and first monoclonal antibody now present in, uh, in Europe, you see the first biosimilar expected to contribute to at least a 19% increase in access to patients in Central and Eastern Europe. Well documented and well shared has been the use of filgrastim. Filgrastim, you've seen two examples here on the, on the chart. You see increased use in, uh, documented in Italy, you see increased use in the UK. And in fact, uh, since the launch of biosimilar filgrastim, you now find that 30% more patients receive access and use filgrastim as part of their neutropenia treatment. Mm. That's either 30% more patients receiving treatment 
uh, or 30 percent more patients receiving treatment earlier in their treatment pathway. Very, very good news for patients and we expect this to continue as the biosimilar journey continues. If you look at our commitment to quality, we now have 10 years, and you see this documented in the left-hand corner, 10 years experience now of the EU regulatory uh, biosimilar pathway. And I really applaud the uh, EMA for its institutional courage and pioneering position to establish a robust and scientifically rigorous pathway to market for biosimilars, which we follow. 